education and lock them into positions of hopelessness and helplessness. The government gives them the drugs, builds bigger prisons, passes a three-strike law, and then wants us to sing God bless America. No, no, no. Not God bless America. God damn America that's in the Bible for killing innocent people. God damn America for treating us citizens as less than human. What's the first thing that you think of when two white Democrat men and one black Democrat woman get booted from a committee that's now controlled by their political opponents instead of their party? Well, according to AOC, it's a white supremacist conspiracy theory to oppress women of color with stochastic terrorism. <laughs> of course! Do you feel safe sitting there with him? I think it's uncomfortable. Um... <laughs> serving with people who engage in what many experts deem stochastic terrorism. Which <laughs> I really cannot stand the way she talks. It's just dripping with condescension and totally undeserved arrogance. So yeah, as we know, the experts are never wrong. And just who are these experts anyway? We'll never know because the reporter never asks her. He makes zero effort to find out because he knows that she would look like a complete fool with no response. So what is stochastic terrorism? Well, it's a new label that increasingly authoritarian Democrats seem to be using as a justification to criminalize speech, scrutiny, and criticism against them because it puts them in danger. Where did this term even come from? I have no idea. It seemed to just sort of appear out of nowhere, which should concern you because this is the definition. The public demonization of a person or group resulting in the incitement of a violent act. So right off the bat, this term is very anti-free speech, very anti-First Amendment, which we know the Democrats are gunning for. And do you think that this term refers to white people or conservatives and Republicans? Of course not, because she's on TV right now demonizing Republicans, but apparently it's different when they do it. And it's really weird because it sounds a lot like what AOC was doing when she hyperbolically and totally baselessly called ICE facilities concentration camps, which led to actual terrorist attacks on ICE ICE facilities, resulting in the death of the attackers, by the way, just days later. Does anyone here watching this right now think that this is what AOC is talking about? <laughs> of course not. Which is the incitement of violence in a, uh, which is an incitement of violence using digital means and large platforms so that individual themselves may not be the one that's wielding a weapon. Um, but I... Well, I... What was she even saying there? It was almost like... She sort of realized what she was saying mid-sentence there and then tried to uh, muddy the waters with a bunch of gobbledygook. I'm really not sure what she said there. Let me just kick it back real quick. See if I'm alone here. Of violence using digital means and large platforms so that individual themselves may not be the one that's wielding a weapon. Um, but I have had to ride okay, as a... Okay, so she seems to be saying that just like the definition that we read, it's if somebody gets incited to violence and it's that individual's fault for whatever they said. Now, of course, you know, you could apply this to anything. I mean, you could apply it to the mass media. You could apply it to her, like I just said, uh, in reference to those ICE facilities. And how about the riots that we went through for years that, and most of the cases were started with false information from the media and from Democrats like the hands up, don't shoot thing, which definitely led to violence and riots, with the, which the media cheered on as racial reckonings, uh, and then bailed out the riders and got charges dropped for them. So, I mean, do you think that any of this, any of these things is crossing AOC or John Berman's mind? That is the obvious danger here. She's making a case that her political opponents incite threats against her by opposing and criticizing her. Of course, she can sit there on CNN and paint the Republicans as dangerous and human monsters, which will no doubt result in them getting threats. But again, apparently that standard does not apply to her. I mean, look what happened to Rand Paul. He got attacked by his neighbor and then he, later he got attacked by a mob. And then on another occasion, he was part of the GOP baseball game where a Democrat came out to the field firing at them, hitting Steve Scalise, almost killing him while screaming, this is for health care. And the guy worked 
for Bernie Sanders. Now, at the time, there was a lot of rhetoric in the media and from Democrats about how Republicans want you to die and millions of Americans are going to die because of their opposition to Obamacare. But do you think that stochastic terrorism applies to that? Of course not. We never heard of that until just now. Okay, so this is where it gets good because not even... CNN's John Berman, one of the most partisan people on TV, obviously a Democrat operative. Not even he can buy what AOC is putting out. Alan Schiff are both white guys. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's not about race, <laughs> mm -hmm. but this is? Well, you know, I think when we look at all three of these, first of all, when you look at Swalwell and Schiff, ready for the deflection. Um, they're targeting, and, and the Republican Party's targeting of all three of them have always been about campaigning, and oh. it has always been oh, about, about the perspectives that they bring. It is okay, that's called politics in a democracy. Yeah, one side disagrees with what the other side says, their message, and they campaign against that because they believe they have the better ideas. I'm confused. What exactly is the problem here? I I'm so tired of these people lecturing about democracy. But they think only they should have free speech and apparently they should only have power because if they don't have power, then democracy is over. I mean, now she appears to be saying that Republicans doing what any politician has ever done in the history of America is somehow now terrorism. It is about political revenge in the case of all three of them. So what? Uh, political revenge for Adam Schiff for his work on the impeachment of Donald Trump. Political revenge with Eric Swalwell in the incisive, Swalwell was a CCP uh, asset, his probably incisive still is. ability to communicate against the Trump administration and the wrongdoings of the Republican Party. And in the case of Ilhan Omar, I believe that that hers is absolutely especially amplified with racist targeting. Oh, right. Because of her skin color. You cannot scrutinize. You can't criticize. You can't kick them off a committee for being blatantly anti-Semitic, which even the Democrats, uh, 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 Hakeem Jeffries even admitted himself that it was anti-Semitic. Apparently, none of that matters when you're a person of color on the, in the Democrat Party. Of course, if you're in the Republican Party, you're not actually a person of color. It's like Biden said, if you know, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. I just love how even the CNN guy can't let that go. And you'll notice she doesn't even really address that. She just turns it into, a, oh, it's a conspiracy against Democrats by Republicans to hold them politically accountable. Like, how is that any different than when Democrats controlled the committee and kicked Republicans off? Of course, that was just different when they did it. Of course, it's just that same theme that keeps punching us in the face. It's different when they do it. It's different when they do it. It's different when they do it. It's different. All right, folks, that's all I have for that one. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about this format. I'm always probably going to sprinkle it in there just to break things up, but I'd like to know your feelings on it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, share, subscribe, and make sure to leave a comment to let us all know what you think. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you on the next one.